Hey everyone, and welcome to another intro to World Creator 2 Extras. I'm Tyler, and in this video, we're going to dive a bit deeper into our mountain range details by shaping it with some erosion. But first, let's look at some of the erosion options that World Creator 2 has to offer. So let's go up to Filters, select our erosion layer, and click Add. So here there are two categories for erosion. There's the basic erosion category and the advanced erosion category. The basic one houses your typical easy form of erosion and advanced houses your erosions that are based on different types of simulations. There's actually a few other erosion types that aren't here in the basic or the advanced tabs. One of which is in the canyon category here under canyon eroded. And another one is under the terrace category called terrace eroded. I also like to think that under ridged and the regular mountain range is also somewhat a erosive type filter because as you can see here in our example, it's adding these type of flow elements near the bottom of the terrain. So how that these erosion filters work is that they are basically being calculated from the top of the terrain down to the bottom of the terrain. Let's turn through some settings real quick. So the first two filters we have here are erosion deep and erosion soft. And those two are pretty much the same thing, except erosion deep affects it in a bit more drastic way compared to erosion soft. So if we have erosion deep here selected, we are presented with some of its filter properties. And these are some of the same filter properties that you might see between multiple of these erosion filters here. So general strength is obviously the strength of the filter as a whole. So depth does basically exactly what it sounds like. It adjusts the depth of how much this erosion filter cuts into the terrain. So, but here, the higher the number, the more detailed it is going to be. And the lower the number, the more broad that detail is going to cut into the terrain. Your biggest contributor of this properties is the maxed length. So say that you start from the top of this peak here and run down to the bottom. The length basically determines how far each of the calculation of erosion is to be considered. So for example, if we were to lower this from 75 to say down to somewhere around 25, you can see real quick on the terrain here that the length of the cut is really short. Let's go ahead and increase this again. As I'm increasing it, you can see that the length is having a really drastic effect on how long the erosion cut is within this filter. The slope here just establishes the max slope to include in the erosion calculation. This one is real finicky to notice, so really to see this, let's go ahead and decrease it pretty far down. And we'll somewhere hover around two and three. So you can see that this low number here is basically establishing that up to three degrees in slope is the only slopes that's going to contribute the influence to the rest of the terrain's erosion. It's a little bit finicky to understand, but it's just best just to keep this at full 90. That way you can have all the slopes be affected basically by this one particular erosion filter. And the next biggest contributor is the slope strength. Now, this will basically determine how much of the different slope angles will impact the terrain directly. If we were to decrease this, you can see that the strength of the erosion is lowering itself in a much more granular way. And the last biggest contributor is this min height and min max. So this basically sets the bounds to the filter's effects in terms of height. So if I were to take the max height, for example, and just drop it to 50, you can see just like the height distribution that the max height that's going to be considered for this filter is about 500 meters. But you can see that the effect from 500 meters down has changed quite drastically. That's because the entire calculation for this erosion filter is set between negative 500 and 500. If we were to say increase this to 2500, then that effect is basically stretched between a much larger range. And then of course down here we have our level steps that we learned before that will affect the variability of the details in most cases. And Erosion Soft does a lot of the same things that Erosion Deep does, but as you can see, it's a much more subtle effect. We can increase the strength and get a little bit more depth in our river paths, but the main contributor to Erosion Soft here is this noise and precision options here. The noise is basically going to provide some procedural noise to the flow path of this erosion. And precision is basically going to do the same thing, but it provides a little bit more fine granularity to the path's gradient effects from the flow amount to the non-flow amount. You can see if I decrease the precision, then the flow amount is pretty rough. And if I increase that pretty high, then it's a little bit more smooth. So it's adding a little bit more adjustments between what's rough and not rough, basically. 
Next, we have erosion fluvial, and this is not only vertical erosion, but lateral erosion on the concave sides and basins. This erosion is mostly seen on riverbeds or the side walls of rivers. The premise of this is as water runs along the side of the mesh, it deforms the sides and walls of that mesh based on the rock content and sediment content in that area. It starts off small here at the very top and then it widens the further along down the mountain it goes. The main difference here between erosion fluval is that the depth basically controls the amount of mesh at which the filter will erode. So if we were to decrease this, then the depth is going to allow more of an erosive effect on the sidewalls. So the lower I go, the less deep that it's going to accommodate for, which actually provides more of an erosive effect. The deeper we go or the higher the number, then it's basically going to almost start to transition like the regular soft erosion or erosion deep. It's not going to rub off much of the sidewalls and it'll just be like your normal streams. The next one is just called erosion, and this is going to be more of your generic form of a fluid style erosion. We'll cover this a little bit further here soon, but the premise of this is the flow amount and the depth reduction. So the flow amount here basically controls how much of the mesh gets pulled with the flow effect. If we were to increase this, it's going to be much more river-like. And if we decrease this, then more detail gets pulled with the effect and it starts doing some wild results. And then depth reduction just basically reduces how deep the effect is taking place. If we were to increase this, we are applying depth reduction and you can see that the erosion is not getting as deep as it was before. Pretty simple. The wind erosion here is actually a really quite fun one to do because it can affect the terrain in a wildly different way, especially whenever you apply the angle distribution to this filter or when you apply the slope distribution. You can get some interesting results by combining the two or mixing and matching. So real quick here, the length basically describes how long the erosion is taking place. So the higher the number, the more wind is going to erode the terrain and the lesser the number, the less wind is going to erode the terrain. The direction basically just describes the angle on the terrain that you want this effect to take place. Let's jump on over to the next category here, the advanced erosions. We only have three here. We have angled, hydro, and talus, and they're all sort of these simulated effects. So the first one, our angled erosion, is a really nice simulated form of erosion that has many effective outcomes. It's a form that lets you control how much angular the erosive effect is on the concave and convex areas. Let's jump into some of the controls here real quick. Depth, of course, controls how deep the effect takes place. So if we were to increase this sum a little bit, you can see that it's carving into the terrain a little bit at a time. The amount basically determines the iterations of this effect. So if we were to increase this, it's a bit of a subtle effect, but you can see that there's more of these erosive details happening closer in the valleys of this erosion. If we increase this more, you can see that it is adding ever so slightly more iterations. And the erosion smoothness basically controls how smooth it is in the concave areas, while the ridge smoothness controls how smooth this effect is on the convex areas. So if we were to increase erosion smooth, you can see that in the concave sort of areas here, it is getting ever so slightly smoother. Let's take this back to default and let's increase the ridge smoothness and you can sort of see that the ridge lines of each of these erosive effects is smoothing out just ever so subtly. These are very subtle controls, but you can get a pretty nice effect out of them. Now hydro control here is the big boy, and it may look weird here at first, but you have a ton of options and settings that you can control here. The hydro erosion basically has three different types of erosion taking place, and it's the type of erosion basically that forms around sediments being pulled away while collecting and building up in shallow areas, all being controlled by somewhat of a fluid simulation of this effect. This filter is quite extensive as you can see here in this list, so we're definitely going to be covering this filter more specifically later on in the series, but at its essence it gives you a lot of control over several types of liquid and sedimentation effects on the terrain, stuff like hydraulic erosion, rain, wind, and thermal erosion. The last effect here is the talus simulation, and I actually like this one a whole lot. You may not have noticed it too much, but it's all in the details. 
To break it down, talus erosion is the form of rocks or sedimentation that pile up at the bottom of a cliff or a steep slope. As you can see in this image example, we have all of this sedimentation that has sort of coned up in the bottom of this cliff side. All of this is talus erosion, and it is a really neat effect that you can apply in more ways than just this type of erosion effect. But to get something that looks similar to this image, you can basically do these few steps. Now the three settings here that you're going to see the most detail out of is the move speed, movement threshold, and movement smoothness. So if we increase the move speed to say 0.8 in that area, you're not going to see much, but let's go ahead and adjust these other two settings here. Let's reduce the movement threshold to somewhere around 16. Aha, you see there now we have a little bit more effect. And so let's go back and reduce the move speed and see how it plays a role and see you're adjusting how extra subtle it is. So basically move speed is going to determine how much sediment is being pushed down the hill. Let's take this back up to 0.8 and then let's adjust this smoothness slider here. You can see now that the effect is being blanketed out across a much wider range. And if we were to lower this, we are lowering the effect, obviously. So one thing that you can do here that makes this really powerful, let's go ahead and add and close this. And then let's specify that we want this to be in a concave area. Now we're getting something that looks a little bit more realistic. So combining talus simulation with the cavity filter distribution, as well as say the height distribution here, let's say this height is fine, but we want it to be a little bit more smooth. So we'll adjust our distribution here to be a gradient of about 100 meters. Uh, let's increase this to about 300 and see how that works. All right, so now we can see this talus simulation is basically collecting all those sediments within these cavities, and it's collecting here on a nice sharp edge. If we were to, say, decrease this movement smoothness, we're going to get more of a rocky bottom here. Or if we go ahead and increase this smoothness, we can make sure that the transition here at the bottom is a nice gradient effect. So playing around with these is a really powerful tool where you can control how much sediment is being controlled and moved between areas. Now that we've covered the basics to all these erosion effects, let's go ahead and jump on over to our terrain that we've been designing and apply an erosion filter. Let's add just the basic erosion filter to our mountain range here. So again, we're gonna make sure that mountains are selected and we're gonna add this filter. And then we're gonna make sure we're under a basic erosion and then the regular erosion filter here and go ahead and click add and close. Now, as you can see, this filter is quite strong. So let's reduce this to a strength of somewhere around 66. And again, just like the other filters in this range, I wanna go ahead and make sure that this filter affects only the certain height range within our height selection option here. So we'll just check this and we'll make sure that the lower range is set to 200 and we'll change the upper range to 2000. And then I want the lower distribution range here to blend at about 150 meters. There we go. So we have this nice fall off effect happening here. Now, all these defaults are fine, but the biggest thing that I want to adjust here is the levels of this erosion here at the filter level strength sliders down below. I want there to be some subtle striations in the side of the mountain ridge along here, but not this powerful of an effect. So I'm basically going to shift most of my detail to be more of a broad detail in these lower levels here instead of the smaller details you can see in the upper levels. So let's go ahead and reduce these here. And just like with the other filters, we're going to make this line here more of an arc effect. So let's go ahead and increase the second level here to somewhere around 33. I'm gonna increase the strength number eight to 86. Next one at 130, 150 for the next one, 111 for level strength 64. We're gonna make the next one just 100. And the final one at level strength 256, we're gonna make that just 52 in strength. And you can see what I've done is I've made this smooth arc effect. So you can see most of the detail is happening in the lower to mid broad range, and we're completely reducing the higher details altogether. So the effect that has taken place here on the terrain is we're adding more of these little striation effects across our ridge lines here. Let's go ahead and turn this erosion off and applying it. 
you can see it's very subtle, but it adds a little bit more detail to the other filters that we've already applied to this layer. So basically what we did with this erosion filter is we applied what's called a macro level detail style erosion. We're going to cover the macro and micro erosion techniques later on, but this is a method of adding erosion to affect the larger shapes of the mountain as opposed to the more fluid look of the smaller details that we can apply later on. And the last thing that I want to do here is probably reduce some of the sharpness to our ridge lines here. If I were to zoom in, you can see that the peaks are ever so slightly sharp. So to reduce that, we can simply just add another filter. And then this time we're going to go up to the general category. And then right here, you can see this filter that's called smooth ridges. We're going to click that add and close. And this is a bit extreme. So I'll cut the strength down to somewhere around 50%. And then I want to make sure that this effect is tightened up closer to the actual ridge line and not covering most of this broad effect here. That's where this length setting is going to come into play. The length slider is basically how far this filter travels. So we will want to set it something really small so that we can just soften up the true peaks and not the entire mountain as a whole. So let's set this something really, really small. And though this might be good, it's softening up our ridges a little bit too much. So let's reduce this even further. How about four? There we go. Four seems to be pretty good. It didn't completely remove the sharpness that we had before. It's just ever so slightly added a softness effect to it. So now I want to make sure that this smoothness ridge is also affecting just that same height range. So we're going to select the height range, make our top range 2000 and our bottom range 200. This time I'm going to make sure that the height smoothness is somewhere around 100 so that we can have this effect take place further down the mountain. As you can see here in the heat map selection. And the last thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and make sure that this is distributed based on the convex areas even more so. So we can go ahead and change this cavity selection here to convex. We can go ahead and turn our heat maps on so that we can see exactly where it's taking place. And this is capturing a little bit too much of the convex areas in this situation. So let's lower our steps to somewhere around two is fine. There we go. So it's shortening up that a little bit more. And let's go ahead and make sure that our strength here is even more powerful, somewhere around 10. And there you go. That's the effect that I was wanting to take place. We can hide and unhide this. So this is before the smooth ridges filter and this is after. You can see it's ever so slightly subtle. So it adds just a little bit more realism to all of our ridges. And there you have it, everyone. We have finally completed the terrain detail for our very first biome, the mountain biome. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.